So obviously, as a biochemist that we, uh, or let us, let's say a structural biochemist that, that I am in my lab is involved in, we would like to understand the system they are working with and the biochemistry and the biology of it by knowing the structure, because this is usually giving you the most deeply sort of uh, understanding of, of the system, uh, of your favorite system. So let me brief, for those of you that have never worked with, let's say, uh, protein structures, and we're using X-ray crystallography uh, to determine the structure, although there are other methods that I will not be talking about. And there will be actually an IBO seminar series coming up uh, later on. But I'll give you sort of a, just a brief introduction to give you a feeling for how you get at your particular structure. To, to, so you can see that you're not afraid of using the method for, uh, in, in your favorite system. So what you start out with is you have to have pure protein, sometimes a lot, or let's say a milli, lots of milligrams of proteins. You, you, you crystallize them, hopefully that works. And once you crystallize them, you put them through an X-ray beam. I'm sorry, this is still a German uh, sort of slide because uh, if Mr. Röntgen is the one who discovered X-rays and we still like to call them Röntgen Strahlen, which means X-rays. And so you shine these X-rays through a crystal, and, and yeah, then these uh, X-rays are diffracted. You sample the diffraction pattern, uh, and then uh, you uh, use that to calculate uh, your, your result. Just to make sure that you understand this, this slide, I put the, the, the English version of it down there, X-rays shown in a crystal and then being analyzed on a detector. But so you end up by a complicated mathematical machinery uh, calculation, which is standardized, by the way, so you don't have to really learn all the details about it. But by this standardized method, you end up with an electron density map of your favorite protein. And now you have to do the, the really fun part, which is build an atomic model of it. And give you here an example of a particular part of RAS polypeptide. So the chain runs from left to right. You see that there, that uh, you, for example, this would be a, a five-membered ring that can only be proline. You see, for example, down there, a bifurcated amino acid, which can be aspartic or threonine or valine, the same one down here. And there's an aromatic residue up there, which has also a little tip on it, so that must be a tyrosine. So in other words, you end up, indeed, and you probably did it while you're looking at the screen, you end up with your atomic model with a tyrosine and an aspartic acid, a proline, and a threonine down there, and if you look into the sequence of your particular protein, you know this can, must be a certain part of the sequence of your protein. 